Thank you. <laughs> Second time's the charm. Sorry for the very un, uh, anticlimactic start. Um, but <laughs> my name is Tina Guo, and I'm very, very happy to be here with you guys today. Um, so I was asked to talk a little bit about my life, um, speak a little bit about my career. Uh, sorry, I'm a little out of breath. Out of breath. Um, a little bit my, about my career as a cellist uh, and as a soundtrack recording artist. So I don't know if anybody recognized that piece. Well, probably in the back. You go. Okay. <laughs> so uh, that was a the main theme to the new Wonder Woman movie. It first appeared in Batman vs. Superman. Um, and the main melody, even though it kind of sounds like electric guitar, uh, it was actually cello. <laughs> it was actually the electric cello. Um, so I was very uh, lucky to have been able to work on that uh, main theme with Hans Zimmer. Um, so yeah, I'll just start from the very beginning. I have about Oh God! Only 13 more minutes. All right, I better hurry up. I have about 13 minutes to tell you guys a little about my a little bit about my experiences um, and some of the lessons that I have learned along the way. So, uh, the year was 1985, and that was when I was made in China. Um, <laughs> yay! Like a lot of things, right? And um, so my parents, uh, they are both classical musicians, um, and they're also extremely conservative. Um, and <laughs> Yay! Okay, <laughs> they're extremely conservative. They have since then been unconservatized, if that is a term, um, by myself. But uh, so this is basically what happened. So they grew up during the communist revolution in China, um, and they were both in the army, like most people were. It was a requirement to be in the army, or they would send you out to the farms to work as a farmer for a year. So they both uh, chose to join the army and actually play in the army orchestra. So that's how they met. And you know, when I think back, I was thinking earlier this morning, I'm like, what? I, I know that my parents are very conservative and I think Asian culture in general is, uh, is more on the conservative side, but what, what is it that made them so extremely conservative to the extreme? And I think just growing up in, in that kind of communist mentality where everything, um, nothing should stand out, standing out is bad. You, you only wanna do what um, is acceptable. Um, what is known. And so being classical musicians, their dream for me, of course, was for me to join an orchestra, which is beautiful because I love classical music and I still do play classical music. Uh, but growing up, so I was forced and coerced, let's just say forced, I won't go into detail. Uh, there might have been some locked doors uh, involved in keys, but I was forced to practice for usually about eight to 10 hours a day on top of going to normal school every day uh, since I was seven years old. And to be completely honest with you, uh, as a child, I was extremely unhappy because um, <laughs> I think, you know, of course, I wanted to go out and play, um, go on field trips, none of which I was allowed to go on. And for me, my, my youth was really just a training ground of you have to practice, you have to be the best, you have to be a good classical musician, um, which I'm really, really grateful for now because I think it built the foundation of uh, the technique and muscle memory that is really, really important uh, to have as a musician, whatever genre of music it is that you're playing. Um, so yeah, I, I practiced for <laughs> eight to 10 hours uh, a day and also my parents did not allow myself and my little brother to listen to anything but classical music, um, uh, much like, like in communist China where most types of uh, music were banned, were outlawed, so I think it just kind of carried on from there, and so they said, you can't listen to anything, it's the devil's music, it's bad, um, <laughs> and, and the, I think the most, you know, the most dramatic uh, experience that I had music-wise that really affected me a lot was when I was in seventh grade. So I was a really nerdy kid, you know, very shy, uh, horror. I, I would, I would have been, I would have died already if I was, you know, in front of an audience like this. I was super, super shy. Always had a book in front of my face when I was walking down the hall, so I wouldn't have to look at anyone in the face uh, in case they looked at me. And um, there was this guy in seventh grade. His name was Luke, uh, and I had a crush on him because he was very strange. Um, we, it was a very conservative, conservative neighborhood in San Diego that we lived in, um, and he, there weren't that many goths or punks, but he was like the token school goth, and he wore black lipstick. Um, he had like long black hair down his shoulders, but he also had these really thick Coke bottle lens glasses, and he was kind of like this, you know, they would always slide down his nose, so he was kind of a nerd and a goth at the same time, which I thought was, oh my god, that's like awesome, right? So he was a, a nerd goth, and uh, I would like kind of follow him around sometimes during lunch. And at that point in my life, I was try I, I really was attracted to things that were different. I think because when you um, put confines on something or somebody, 
a lot of times, obviously, the psychological reaction is that you want to do the opposite. So I wanted, I was attracted to things that were strange or dark and aggressive. Um, so I'm like, oh, I want to be cool like Luke. So I found some uh, black lipstick from the 99 cent store, my favorite store to this day. Um, and so I would carry it in my backpack to school because, again, my parents would have murdered me if they had seen me with black lipstick. And then... <laughs> I found, this is my most prized piece of uh, jewelry, if you would call it that. I found like the back of a clip-on earring. So if you've seen them, so not the actual earring, just the back. It must have fallen off some poor lady's earring. And then I found a tiny key ring. So not the full-size ones, but the tiny little key rings. And I, I attached it to the earring, and then I clipped it <laughs> to the middle of my nose, like a septum ring. So I'm like, oh, this is going to make me look really alternative and cool. So... That, that, that was that phase, just to give you a little bit of background. Um, um, <laughs> and so one day, Luke says to me, he's like, hey, have you uh, heard of Marilyn Manson? And I said, no, who is she? Uh, and he's like, I'm going to let you borrow my, my CD. I'm like, okay. So I ran, I ran home. It was the uh, Antichrist Superstar CD from Marilyn Manson. Just the name of it, I'm like, oh my, this is like, this is really bad, you know? But I'm like, I'm just gonna listen to it because I think he's kind of cool. So uh, I had this boom box in my room, a really old boom box that we bought from the next door neighbor at their garage sale and had a, a CD player and two like tape decks in the front so you could like, you know, make your own little mixtapes. And I put the CD in, I turned it to the lowest possible volume, I put my ear up next to the speaker so my parents couldn't hear me from the next room. And I played the track, The Beautiful People, and when I heard, The Beautiful People, you know, and it was just, it was, I had never heard anything like that in my life because I was so I was so closed in this environment of I don't want to say closed mindedness because it's not their fault but just you know you stick with what you know don't don't deviate from the norm you know so um, and I just never heard anything like that and it was so like raw and carnal and aggressive and just something that was you know a part of we're humans so we we are uh intelligent beings, but we're also animals, you know? So I think it just really spoke to the visceral part of me. Um, and after I heard that, I just started having this obsession with, I guess, like alternative kinds of music, industrial music. Um, but after that, so that was in middle school, but after that, I continued, you know, being a good classical girl. Uh, and I did all the local competitions. I played with orchestras. Um, and then I, I received a full scholarship to USC for classical cello performance. So of course, I went that route. Um, and then when I got to college, so up until then, this I didn't even know that this thing existed, so I played only classical music. Um, and then when I got to college, I one day discovered, because um, I saw this thing called internet, and internet, I remember, was like invented or first came out when I was maybe end of elementary school. I'm almost 33, by the way, so in case you guys are like, what? Her timeline's a little off. So, um, And I remember they would send out these AOL discs, but uh, again, my, my parents didn't allow me on the internet either, so I just really had no idea about anything in the outside world and when I discovered that they had electric cellos um, at the time I was completely broke I had no money you know so I finally was able to get qualified for a student it was like a Union Bank student USC credit card with barely just enough credit so I could buy myself um, a, a different electric cello a cheaper model uh, and I started experimenting and it took about I would say a good two or three years to figure out how to play standing up um, because the positions are very, very different from when you're playing sitting down. Um, and just to like, you know, gain experience, I posted ads on Craigslist uh, because at the same time, I also was trying to make, you know, uh, even though the scholarship to it covers the tuition, it didn't cover living expenses, books, which are extremely expensive, you know, in college. Um, so I had to figure out a way to support myself as well. Um, so I put up ads on Craigslist every day. I was very, you know, adamant about make sure, making sure I posted every day sometimes two or three ads a day saying I am willing you know cellist for hire I will do any kind of you know cello that you might need so I played endless you know weddings funerals bar mitzvahs uh, engagement parties it was just everything you could think of and I also played with a lot of bands um, and uh, and artists on the Hollywood strip and I think a part of that um, also it at the same time, even though I was doing it for money, not very much, you know, $30, $40 for a gig, um, it also helped train me to, to get used to a different type of atmosphere, to play in clubs, because before then, I'd only played with uh, as a soloist with orchestras, you know, as, as a child cellist, um, and really in the classical environment. So it was a really, really great learning experience. Um, and then I would say about three years uh, after, while I was in school, 
it became very, very difficult to balance work, you know, trying to make enough money to survive, um, and then also practicing my classical cello, which I was still doing, uh, you know, six, seven hours a day, a little bit less, um, and then trying to experiment with the electric cello. So I dropped out of school, and my parents, uh, you know, both of them had simultaneous heart attacks. They're like, what? Oh my God, what are you doing? Um, but I really thought that I owed it to myself to try to figure out if there's possibly something that I could do uh, with the electric cello. Um, and so it, I was you know, out of school for a couple years, and by then I had kind of been struggling, really, really honestly str struggling for maybe four and a half years. Um, I remember at this point I was living in a garage, um, but not a complete garage, ladies and gentlemen. It was half a garage because the owner still parked his car in the other half. Um, and there was this like divider wall, but it wasn't really a wall. It was like a plastic paneling that he probably got at Home Depot, um, and there was no air. There was no, oh, there's air. There's no air conditioning. Um, there was no heat. Um, I, there was a bathtub, which I thought was like super, super awesome. And there was a bathtub, and I love jacuzzis. So I found this, it was like $10 from a really strange like discount catalog. And it said, turn your bathtub into a jacuzzi. And it, you plug it into the wall, and it literally, there's like one little stream of bubbles that kind of comes out. So it, there's no pressure, but I would like, I remember I pushed my back against it and be like, yeah, I have my own jacuzzi. You know, this is the life. Um, so there, there was a bathtub, there was a toilet. Um, in the kitchen, in the kitchen, <laughs> there's no stove, there's no fridge. So I had a mini fridge. I bought one of those hot plates from Target uh, for, I remember, $23.99. I'm like, score. Um, so I, and the rent was $6.50 a month, including utilities. And I just, you know, any money that I made from gigs, from these Craigslist gigs, uh, I would just put away to try to, uh, I guess, conserve so I can figure out a way to spend it to put it into my own career. And then, so, you know, you have four or four years of that. And I got to the point where I'm like, this this really isn't working. You know, like every month I was struggling to figure out how to pay rent and just really, you know, really, really, um, no one likes to live like that, right? Like shopping at the uh, clearance sections of grocery stores. And so I said, I need to put everything I have into this like vision that I have and figure out if I'm just delusional. And if I am, I'm gonna go the, the classical route like my parents wanted me to. I'll go back to school because they, they still offer, they said if you wanna come back, you can come back. You know, I'll be a classical cellist, I'll join an orchestra. And so uh, in the year 2009, so this is five years after I moved to LA to, uh, for college, uh, I put all of my life savings, and at that time it was a little under $6,000, which you know was a lot of money to save for, for a musician. Um, and uh, I put it all into this music video, which you can see on YouTube. Uh, so my very first music video is called Queen Bee, um, and it is a heavy metal version of the flight of the bumblebee. And uh, I actually had like a, a dream, not to get all you know frou frou on you guys, but I, I had a dream um, about what it would look like. And so it took me five months to try to get all the production together because I did most of it myself. I, you know, like the craft services, catering. I was like running to Ralph's in the morning trying to buy the bagels and stuff. Um, uh, so I really did as much of it myself as possible. But anyway, long story short, my thought was that okay, if I put out a video where I can show people what it is that I want to become, not what I'm, what I am right now, but I want to play electric cello. I want to be kind of like the equivalent of what a lead guitar player would be to a band, you know? And my dream was to play with either Marilyn Manson or Rammstein or Metallica. And I thought, okay, maybe if I put up a music video on this new website called YouTube, uh, maybe if I do this, somebody will like see it and they'll show it to them and then they'll invite me on tour and then my life will be complete, you know, and it'll be finished. So, um, so I, I did the video and uh, I waited for about a week after it was released. Of course, I didn't get a phone call from any of these bands, and I thought, oh, Lord, you know, I've, that's it. I have no money, I'm broke, and nobody wants me. So, uh, but when, it was like eight days after the video came out, I got a phone call. And it was Hans Zimmer. And at that time, I did not, and this was in 2009, so I did not, I actually honestly didn't know who he was because to me, I didn't even think about soundtrack music. I thought music just magically appeared in TV shows and movies. I, I, it didn't occur to me that there was this entire industry, uh, you know, a huge multi-million dollar industry um, behind score, score work. And he said that he had seen my music video and that he wanted to know if I wanted to be a, a soloist on the score for Sherlock Holmes, the first one. And I said, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Of course. Um, so I went in, and then two days later, uh, another composer, John Debney, who wrote the music for the new Jungle Book movie, the live action one, Passion of the Christ, um, and he at the time he was working on Iron Man 2, and he actually wrote to me on Facebook, and he said, 
hey, Tina, I'm John. Uh, I, I saw your video. I was wondering, instead of hiring an electric guitar player, I saw your video. I thought maybe you could come and play some solos uh, on the new Iron Man 2 soundtrack. And I thought, this is really strange. This was not my intention at all. But that's just kind of how it happens. So when people ask me, yeah, like, what made you want to get into the soundtrack world and recording world? Um, and I, I, it was completely by accident. Um, and then uh, after that, this was, I would say, two years later, um, I also received a call from the Cirque du Soleil, and I did run away and join the circus from 2011 to 2013. Uh, I was in the Michael Jackson The Immortal World Tour. We played here in Atlanta. I think that was back in 2012. Um, and also the same thing, I, I asked them, I'm like, because usually you have to audition, you have to go through a whole process, and they said, no, we saw your like really crazy video on um, on YouTube, and we had to edit some parts of it out to show our you know our casting people, but um, could you do something like that for one of our shows? And they offered me a position on that show or two other shows that were in development, and of course I took that uh, opportunity because it was like you know regular income for a while. Um, and funny enough, uh, my parents, that was the first time that my very conservative parents actually. Uh, I, I guess they approved, and I think it's extremely ironic because my character uh, in the Cirque du Soleil show was kind of this um, alien, um, and so I, I was like an alien electric cello player, and I had this Swarovski crystal outfit that was designed by Michael Jackson's uh, wardrobe designer who did all the costumes for the show, except the, the pants, it only had one leg, and the other pant leg, like half a butt cheek was hanging out. And so it was not a conservative outfit, and then I was wearing a bra, and so it, it was a lot of skin. And I thought my parents, again, they would, it's just one heart attack after another, but they were actually okay with it. And the reason was because I was an employee, I got paid every two weeks, I had health insurance, <laughs> and they said, oh, you have health insurance. And I said, yes, you get paid every two weeks? I said, yes, they're like, good. <laughs> So, so, you know, and like bless them now, they're extremely, they're, they're very, very supportive. Um, oh God, I think I'm out of time. Sorry guys, all right, I'm gonna try to wrap this up. Um, and so anyway, uh, I did that. Then I came back from the circus and I, uh, oh, while I was in the Cirque du Soleil, I started studying um, and taking courses online in investments, you know, in stocks, peer-to-peer -peer lending. And so that's when I started, I spent, I had this app, it was called My Budget um, app. It's a free app. And I spent, I kid you not, $20 a week for two years. That's all I spent. So I would take money from, uh, not money, not money, sorry. I would take food from craft services, from catering. Hey, no shame, not too much. You know, I, I needed to leave food and stuff for the other acrobats, but um, just a little bit, and I spent uh, literally nothing, and I invested everything. So uh, that was really also the beginning of my like, my passion for, I guess, I guess uh, wealth building. Um, and so, oh, there's so many things I want to talk to you guys about, but I, there's other speakers, so I need to, I need to hurry this up. Um, well, I'm going to be in a panel, I think around 2 o'clock in the Hanover Room uh, later today, so I'll talk more then. Uh, I think I will play one more song for you guys. Is that okay? Okay. <laughs> Um, this is from uh, my absolute favorite TV show. I did not play uh, on the original score for this, just so you know, so you guys know. But this is kind of my version of it. It is Game of Thrones. So just give me 20 seconds. Okay.